What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, all of my small children on YouTube. So now I'm gonna look at the top 10 fighting games according to IGN. And I was a little bit surprised, this video has 40,000 views and it was posted quite a few days ago. I thought anything posted on IGN reached half a million or i'm completely out of the loop i don't watch these channels but it's going to be interesting because uh, the Mo watch mojo one was a little bit iffy but here people tell me these were selected with care and the dude actually the narrator seems to know what he's talking about so it's going to be interesting right now Fighting games have a special place in both the past and present of gaming. It's a genre that requires quick thinking, twitch reflexes, and vast amounts of knowledge of both yourself and your opponent's options to play at a high level. It can often seem intimidating, but some of the most recognizable series in pop culture, such as Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, belong to that same genre. So for our deliberations in assembling this list, we've laid out some special criteria. We've excluded platform fighters such as the Smash Brothers series. Oh, they Wow! So he's basically saying we don't feel these are fighting games? Series, as that's important enough to be a list on its own, we only have one game representing each series. And while Legacy can play a big part, they must offer robust mechanics wow. and still be fun to play today. Here's our list. I mean, that's controversial. Immediately a very controversial statement, basically. They are their, their own thing and we'll put them in their own list. I have to admit, though, that as someone who used to say platform fighters like Smash, in my opinion, aren't strictly, aren't really fighting games. It's more like the communities turn them into fighting games. But more and more, the last few months, I've more and more started to see them as fighting games, like multiverses. The depth is, uh, is for sure there, I feel, and... Uh, the movement is, of course, not so much about what you do on the platform itself, but controlling yourself mid-air with very well-timed um, dashes, etc., etc. So I'm more and more starting to le lean towards, like, yeah, Smash is a, is a fighting game. Yeah. And multiverses. Mortal Kombat 9 marked a turning point in the history of MK. It was a reboot, not just of its story, but of everything that defined Mortal Kombat over the years. Puzzle combat, motor combat, and weird creative fatalities were all gone in lieu of a back-to-basics approach that focused on the actual combat above all else. It turned out to be the best possible decision for the series, because Mortal Kombat 9 brought the legendary fighting series back from the brink, thanks to its excellent story mode, copious amounts of fan service, and redone mechanics that laid the foundation for subsequent games to follow. It certainly was not the most balanced fighting game in the world, but that was part of its charm. And its imperfections are actually one of the reasons why many fans still prefer MK9 over 10 and 11 to this day. Can't disagree with MK9. Um, I'm a big fan of MK11, and from a production standpoint, I don't know what fighting game comes even close to their story mode, their graphics, all the mocap work, uh, dialogue. Did I say lore? Uh, now they have in-game guides, and the depth is there, enough of it at least, to satisfy a casual gamer and a hardcore gamer, so. Ready for what you are about to face. Even just a passing glance at Skullgirls in motion will tell you that this isn't your average indie fighting game, but there's more to Skullgirls than- Animated by hand. No fake 3D, this, this is hand drawn, and holy shit is it beautiful. I, I had never really looked at Skullgirls, and then I happened to stumble upon, I went, I stumbled upon the game while looking at Evo this year, and I saw Sonic Fox play, and I was like, oof. I thought it was so beautiful to look at. And just its looks. Skullgirls has one of the most flexible fighting game systems ever made. Every character has a ton of different combo routes, and you can play as a solo character with increased health and damage, a balanced duo team, or fill up your squad with three characters that are weaker, but offer the advantage of extra assists and combo extensions. Add in memorable character design, art style, and music on top of silky smooth gameplay and net play, and it's no wonder Skullgirls still thrives 10 years later. And it was the first game to introduce rollback, right? Go time, baby. 
Virtua Fighter V Final Showdown was the final arcade and console iteration of Sega's premier 3D fighter, and Ultimate Showdown rebuilt the game on Oh wow, Virtua Yakuza's Fighter! Dragon Engine for modern consoles. Often credited with greatly influencing or even creating the 3D fighter genre, Virtua Fighter is foundational to Man of games. Culture. The likes of Yu Suzuki, creator of Shenmue and Space Harrier, and Toshihiro Nagoshi, longtime head of the Yakuza series, helped craft a series focused on grounded martial arts, vast movement, attack, and counter options, and characters that became instantly iconic. Virtual Fighter V represents the peak of this design, with gameplay that still feels true to its roots, yet distinct from any other fighter out there, and improves on the series' online features. And although some single-player offerings have been removed from earlier versions of Virtual Fighter V, Ultimate Showdown is the easiest way to play the latest entry on modern hardware. With incredibly high ceilings for execution, such as moves that require input windows as small as 1 60th of a second, and characters that are fun to just mash <coughs> buttons on, Virtual Fighter V Ultimate Showdown is a must-play for fans of 3D fighters and the genre as a whole. I don't disagree with him. I think that was very well said, and the game should definitely be on this list. But where I do disagree a bit is where he said uh, introducing characters that became instantly iconic. I think that's what he said, and it's like, I think that was always the big problem with Virtua Fighter. You ask anyone in the modern FGC, like, oh, Virtua Fighter, do you know any characters? And they're like, uh, guy with the headband? And, and we might say Akira, but other than that, who really knows about any of these characters? And I think that was always the problem with Virtua Fighter. It didn't have, like, big names, big, colorful designs. That's what Tekken always did better than this game, and one of the reasons why Tekken took over, I think. Better run home to mama now. <laughs> <clears throat> Twenty thirteen's Killer Instinct proved the series was more than the Mortal Kombat imitator some claimed it to be. It was one of the first mainstream fighting games to integrate rollback netcode, and its online play is still among the smoothest around. Its dojo mode is the best teaching tool the genre has ever seen. It doesn't just teach you how to play Killer Instinct, it teaches you how to play fighting games, full stop, and is required reading for anyone trying to learn the genre. What's more, Killer Instinct is packed with great single player content, and no matter how you play it, it looks great and has a killer soundtrack by Mick Gordon. The soundtrack is incredible. But whether you're yelling along with the announcer while pulling off an ultra combo, landing a perfectly timed combo or counter breaker, or just learning a new character in training mode, Killer Instinct feels great to play and has the technical depth any great fighter needs while remaining unique. Now, if only Microsoft would release a sequel. <sighs> so I haven't played it, so I'm not gonna have an opinion, but the game looks great and the music is incredible. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is set apart by its character balance, or lack thereof, and team construction. Many of the characters are broken in a way that only Marvel can get away with, and being able to put three of these characters together, each with one of three assist options in varying orders, this game a looks so good on release, you like graphically. God, I love the style. Execute an infinite combo one game and question your life decisions as you're stuck blocking soul fists non-stop without having a chance to move the next game. You can start a game off with a mix-up leading to a death combo, mix up your opponent's next character and to another death combo and make one execution error on their third character just to watch your whole team die to a level <clears> three <throat> x-factor comeback it's brutal and unforgiving but that feeling of being all powerful is yeah it was released fast, a long flashy, time ago and the now. combo yeah. system is ridiculous it will garner your attention and take you for a ride oh King Chad. of Fighters series has a number of great entries. What a Chad! And King of Fighters, and, and he ranks it above MBC. However, for our money, it's KOF 13 that remains one of the best. And he added Virtua Fighter. Time. The super detailed pixel art, pace of play, wow, and hyper drive combo is, uh, system gentleman, all helped KOF have man a of culture. In the competitive and casual fighting game scene that continues to this day. And although the infamously difficult combo trials remain, they're not even necessary to use while playing. The characters, team-based combat, and beautiful animation keep this particular king on the throne <clears throat> wait what was that king of fighters 13 <clears throat> not only is dragon ball fighters finally a good dragon ball oh he, he, he even went with 13 uh and i have to agree that that game is by the way hand drawn now it's uh you know 3d king of fighters 14 and 15 and it's so much uglier 13 is so beautiful to look at. Ugh.
football game, but it's an amazing fighting game in its own right. The first thing you'll notice is the presentation. It is absolutely stunning to look at, and the sounds of haymakers, super dashes, and energy beams give the action the punch it really needs. You can freeze nearly any frame, and you might think it's straight from the anime. Combine its presentation with a deep roster of fan-favorite characters, 3v3 tag system, an approachable auto combo system that makes doing flashy combos easy for beginners, and you have one of the most... Tekken has not been mentioned yet, and we're at number four. Most fun to play fighting so games he probably memory, rates it pretty high legs, that's still or very very low. And with the recent announcement of <laughs> we'll rollback see. net code, Dragon Ball Fighters has a very bright future ahead of it. Brawly. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Tekken has always Speak been known of the as devil, one of the most and he shall appear. Franchises. Its 3D movement adds layers of complexity. There are over 50 characters each with well over 100 moves apiece, and the simple act of moving backwards properly requires practice. Its depth and complexity make it every bit as demanding as it is rewarding, and those who put in the time will be rewarded. What sets Tekken 7 apart from other entries in the series, and earns it a spot here, is how much it improved in accessibility without cutting back on its depth. The series returning to 1v1 from the 2v2 format in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 cuts the amount of moves you need to remember in half, but all of the characters individually are just as complex as they were, if not more. Rage Arts and Rage Drives are exciting comeback mechanics but will never beat out solid play. And while the slow-mo finishers don't change much of anything to the gameplay, they have created some of the hypest moments in tournaments. Tekken 7 hits the balance of attracting a new audience without alienating hardcore fans perfectly. That was a really good <clears throat> little uh, Tekken... Uh, summarizing what Tekken 7 has done so well. Uh, and I can only agree on pretty much everything he said. That was well said. Yeah, this guy is very knowledgeable, very on point with uh, pretty much everything. The Guilty Gear series has been pumping out excellent fighting games for more than two decades. But Guilty Gear Strive is where Arc System Works' flagship title finally found mainstream success, and for good reason. Strive sports the best rollback netcode in the business, something that was largely unheard of in a mainstream fighter even a few years ago. But good netcode alone does not a great fighter make. Strive also refined the series' notoriously technical gameplay, making it easy to pick up and understand without losing the depth or the diversity of Guilty Gear's Gonzo cast. Every single one of Strive's 20 characters, whether it's series poster oh, boy and rushdown so monster soul bad guy, Street Fighter or the 4 Lewis at the top plays is my guess here. Differently from one another. So there's an enormous amount to learn and discover even if you only play a single character. Add in Roman cancels, which lets you cancel any action into another action, and Strive has an almost limitless level of player freedom and expression. Combine all that with an excellent story mode, detailed teaching tools, tons of concept art and customization options to unlock, a rock and soundtrack spanning nearly every game in the franchise, and some of the most impressive visuals yeah, I think in the it's genre, gonna be Street and Fighter it's easy 4. to see why Strive has taken the fighting game community by storm. Is Guilty Gear Strive still doing super well? Oh, third strike. I gotta say, I love this guy. Like, uh, you know, putting Tekken third. I think, yeah, some Tekken fans might poop themselves. Like, ah, how dare you? But it's like, you know, it's all opinions. He, I would have, this guy seems very knowledgeable. So I would have, and sensible. So I would respect him even if he place Tekken 7 at number 10 below all of these games, I would be like, well, that's your opinion, you know, he, I think he uh, gives very, very oh. valid arguments as to why he places the game where he does. Uh, but I love this, Third Strike, that's my favorite Street Fighter game as well. Picking a single game to represent the most storied fighting game franchise was a tough ask. After all, Street Fighter 2 popularized the genre when it hit arcades in 1991, and Street Fighter 4 resurrected it when it hit home consoles in 2009. But Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is something special. It gave us Evo Moment 37, the Daigo Parry, and inspired an entire generation of players. But there's so much more to it than that. The sprite work is still some of the most beautifully animated around, the backgrounds ooze style, and the jazz-inspired soundtrack features some of the best 
masked music in any fighting game. Even the roster, underappreciated at the time because of how few characters carried over from Street Fighter 2 and how weird several of the characters are, holds up remarkably well, with options to suit any playstyle. But the real highlight is the parry system. The decision to make any attack, from Hadoukens to Super Arts parryable, adds almost limitless depth to a series already renowned for it, while keeping it fairly easy to pick up and play for newcomers. Third Strike showed us what was possible, bringing the genre's most important series up to speed with its contemporaries while simultaneously elevating it to new heights. More importantly, all of it holds up today, something most games from 1999 can't say, and recent re-releases even support rollback netcode. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is, quite simply, the greatest fighting game ever made. I mean, I don't agree personally, but I would, yeah, I would definitely put it in like top three. Uh, but, you know, c could, can you for sure say, well, in my opinion, it's the best. Yeah, you could definitely argue that and say that without looking like a madman. That game is absolutely godlike. And holy shit, like that parry mechanic, I loved it. It added so much depth to the game, I felt, and really rewarded people at amazing defense. But also, like, the technical the skill ceiling on the characters it's like my, my brother played this game a lot and he was a huge fan of a japanese player called kuroda i think my brother loved yurian uh loved yurian he played this game for many years offline like in practice mode and against ai and there was another uh yurian player called what was he called very famous as well x something very short i think and uh, he, he would show me, like, these are the basic Yurian combos. And he had practiced a ton. I, I couldn't do them. I, it, there were sequences of these shoulders where he was like, he charged them perfectly. He had to do multiple in a row. And I, like, I couldn't do them at all. And then he would tell me, well, this is the basic stuff. And then he would show me Kuroda, you... you uh, Yurian uh, combos with the tackle, optimized, optimized use of the Aegis reflector, and the amount of execution in this game, like when you take it to the top, and with Akuma, it's just absolutely staggering. And then, of course, everyone knows about the um, Evo moment. Is was it thirty seven? Uh, Daigo doing the parry sequence on Shun Li's super. Uh, in terms of technical ability or technical skill ceiling, I don't know what Street Fighter matches Third Strike, uh, but also combine that with uh, uh, beautiful gameplay, super smooth, the best looking Street Fighter of all time, in my opinion. Uh, Street Fighter really 6 is here to challenge it, obviously, nice. but... Important. I, I'd much rather look at this game than Street Most Fighter 4 and 5. To a series already renowned for it, I love the animations. Easy to pick up and play for newcomers. Third uh, but so, man, this, this was a great list. I mean, people told me it was, was going to be good, so I had some expectations, but he blew them away. This guy is very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable, and I love his picks. And he made a great case for all of the games he picked. Gave us really good summaries as to what their qualities are. Hardcore fans, perfect. Uh, so man, super good list and hats four. off to this guy. Like, uh, in my opinion, he has good taste as well. I, I could have made a very similar list. So, man, hats off to him. Trials remain. They're not even and this game, I mean, playing. The characters, I, I think it's so fucking good looking, that game. This particular king on the throne. So good looking. But uh, yeah, good shit IGN, quality fucking video.